Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's Girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe if there's something that you guys want us to react to. Let us know by dropping the link in the comment section below, and we'll be more than glad to react to it if you're new don't forget to subscribe and just enjoy the content that we put out just feel free to suggest anything that you guys want us to look into a big shout out to the person that suggested this they suggested i react to the four voices in your head by hamza yusuf uh if you want to reach us you can find us on facebook as funny and jesse instagram as funny and jesse and feel free to communicate with us and enjoy the content that we're putting out there a uh, big shout out to everyone that has subscribed to our channel so far. Thank you for subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing, and everything that you guys do never goes unnoticed. We're very, very grateful. Uh, so without wasting time, let's get into the video. Abu Aswad al-Du'ali went to Imam Ali and he said, Yalhanu abna'una, our, our children are beginning to speak grammatically incorrect Arabic. And Sayyidina Ali says, Dawan lahum al Arabiyata, Wabda huna. Al Arabiyatu tanqasimu ila ismin wa fi'lin wa harfin. Fanhu hadha nahu. So Sayyidina Ali said to him, Write down the rules of Arabic for them. And he said, and, and, and start here. Arabic is divided into three types of words nouns. And ism is more, it's, it's any substantive, like it includes adjectives and so, so, so ism is not a noun per se in Arabic. It, it includes a, a pronouns and nouns and adjectives. Uh, and then he said fi'lun, uh, which is a, a, a verb, and then harfun, which is uh, the articles, the uh, prepositions. Um, and, 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 and then he said, and go this way. فَنْحُ هَذَا النَّحُو So that's where we got the word نَحُو, grammar, from Sayyidina Ali. So that begins grammar. So they learned grammar, and, and grammar enabled the Ajam, and the Ajam actually surpassed the Arabs. They actually become the, 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 the carriers of the Arabic language. You look at all the great grammarians, they were all Persians. They become the great grammarians of Islam. So... If you say that grammar is a bid'ah, it's a bid'ah baruriyah, it's a necessary bid'ah. It's wajiba, because it's the only way the language will be preserved. But Sayyidina Omar didn't know the fa'il and the maf'ul and the majroor. He didn't know uh, these things. He didn't know al-nasbu bil qat'i, bin naz'a al-khafid. He didn't know any of these terms, but he knew the language and he spoke perfect Arabic and he could understand the Qur'an. He knew when Allah says la ilaha and the la there is nafi lil jins and that's why ilaha is mansub. He knew what that meant. That it means there's no God. Illallah istithna. He knew what that meant. Illallahu. So they understood that by their fitrah. So it becomes necessary though. And in the same way the taskiyah of the sahaba was bil fitrah. They read the Qur'an, they understood the Qur'an. They were in the presence of the Prophet ﷺ. He was purifying them. He was making do it. Yuzakkihim. He was giving them to... zakkaha. And there's a khilaf about that, whether the zakkah is God, or it's the person out of his own effort. But the, there's mukhlis and mukhlas in the Qur'an. So you need both. You need the tazkiyah of God, which is the tawfiq, and you need your own energy to do the tazkiyah. So these scholars began to... Uh, write about Tazkiyah. Imam Muhasibi introduced the idea of Khawatir, that there's four kinds of thoughts. So he differentiated between the thought process of the human being. He said there's Khatar Rabbani, Khatar Malakani, Khatar Nafsani, and Khatar Shaitani. So any thought that comes to your mind is from one of these four sources. In reality, all of consciousness is from God. But Allah created a world of Asbab. So he has angels that work on his behalf. So the Rabbani thought is a powerful positive thought that you can't disobey. It's the thought that made you fast Ramadan this year and made you just pray Maghrib. These are the Rabbani thoughts that come, that you can't disobey them. The Malakani 
is the one that got you to do the sunnah after the... <laughs> it's a lighter. It's something you could take it or leave it. But it's better to take it. The nafsani is the one that told you, I'm tired, I'm not going to do the sunnah now. And then the shaitani was uh, the one that stopped people from praying at all. <laughs> out there. So these are the different types of thoughts that people have. And and Muhasibi uh, put that down. And then you had Abu Talib al Makki, who wrote Qutul Qulub, the nourishment of the hearts, and talked about the maqamat, identified nine maqams. The, the Christians have three theological virtues, the Muslims have nine theological virtues. And uh, and and so Imam Ghazali, he began to read these books and he was deeply distressed. Because what he was realizing was all of the things that they were talking about that were negative, he, he could see in himself. And so th this is the beginning of his crises. But he, but he was also a very prestigious scholar. He's 38, he's at the 40, I mean, that's the peak. The irhasat of the Prophet began at about 38. I mean, that's really when the human being, Aristotle said 49 is the peak. He was 49 at the time he said it. Right? <laughs> but in our tradition, 40 is, is the, the peak. I mean, that's really at the point where you're, you're, you're at the peak because you've got the quwa of the youth and the wisdom of age. And so that, that is really, and then some will say 50 that, that you know, that that's, and some will say 60, that the, the Sheikh Ucha begins at 60. Um, but he was at the peak of his uh, career, intellectually, financially, uh, socially. Uh, kings wanted his company. All of the ulama admitted that he was the best scholar of the time. He could win any argument. He, he, he literally could beat anybody in dialectic because he'd studied Jadal to an extreme degree, so he knew all the ways to argue. He was very um, arrogant by his own admission, but he also said that he realized that what he was doing, he was teaching because he wanted stature, he wanted praise, he wanted the jah. And the Prophet warned us about jah and, and mal. He said that these are more dangerous for the religion of a person than a, a wolf in the midst, a hungry wolf in the midst of sheep. Al-mal wal jah. And jah is stature, prestige. This is what speaks, stops many people in the United States from speaking out about uh, the Palestinian issue. Many people in the US, they know they've got careers, that they've got, they're, they're in CNN, they're in uh, uh, all these news agencies, or they're in academia, and they know that it's a death sentence for their careers. So jah is more important to them than haq, than truth. Chris Hedges is a good example of somebody who's completely destroyed his career and reputation. Pulitzer Prize winning journalist. Now he's, he's a pariah in, in that community. They won't put him on TV anymore. Why? Because he speaks out against the injustices in Palestine. So that's jah, that's what jah does. It prevents you from speaking the truth. And this, this, this uh, controls many, many people, this concern about what other people think. So uh, I was telling one of my sons that he shouldn't care about what other people think. And he, he quoted to me David Foster Wallace, who said, you'll stop worrying about what other people think about you when you realize how little they do think about you. <laughs> Many times we hear people saying they're hearing voices or they did something because a voice inside their head said they must do something, maybe something bad and such cases. Um, I feel like as much as we can control our situations and the way we think in certain times, it's our job to actually um, teach ourselves to handle certain um, information or news because how we react is 
because we want to not because anyone else forced us to and that may show you in a very different light what i'm trying to say is yes you're going to have that one voice that's saying do this thing that's bad and you're also going to be reminded that okay this is not bad so you've got the good and the bad which one wins is really really up to you when you find yourself at a crossroads where there's good and bad trying to influence you maybe turn to god god will help you and if you just trust and have faith in god no matter the situation whether you hear that little voice pushing you to do something bad you're going to control yourself you're going to think better and act better and just the outcome is going to be good for you and no one else but you it's really up to you to have faith in god believe in god have that hope in god and actually put him first or put him into each and everything that you guys do another thing i noticed he was he mentioned he mentioned early in the beginning i'm confused i'm very very confused in this situation who's ali i think i asked this under one of the videos please let me know otherwise let me know what you think about the message and the four voices that you hear in your head and let me know what you, what you have to say make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video